Good evening, everybody. I'm Carter Smith with the Texas Parks and Wildlife, and I see that some of my friends saw me get up to the microphone and then immediately walk away, and I know what was going through their mind. That was the shortest and best speech Carter Smith ever gave. Um, listen, on behalf of all of us at your Texas Parks and Wildlife Department and the Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, welcome. Uh, we're absolutely honored to have you tonight to the annual Conservation Hall of Fame dinner. Uh, what a treat it is to see a hall full of stewards and outdoor enthusiasts and hunters and anglers and park goers and people that care about our wild things and wild places and our home ground. And tonight we're celebrating not only those special places which help define our great state and help make our great identity, but we are honoring those who've helped conserve them for generations of Texans and aren't even born yet today. We're thrilled that you're here with us tonight. The night is special for many, many reasons, not the least of which is that this is the silver anniversary of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation. 25 years across our fine state from one end to the other. Bravo, let's give them a round of applause as they've done great things and good deeds for our lands and waters and fish and wildlife and parks and all of our communities across this great state. And I'll tell you, um, you don't have to look very far to find it. Uh, you can see the fruits of their labor on the mountains in West Texas with bighorn sheep. You can see their efforts with the restoration of pronghorn antelope in the desert grasslands, the restoration of turkeys to the woods of East Texas, putting back Guadalupe bass in our hill country streams and rivers. You can see the fruits of their work at facilities like the Bravo, absolutely. Places like the Texas Freshwater Fishery Center, which since its inception has introduced over a million Texan kids and their families to the outdoors, to fishing, hunting, nature, conservation. The Game Warden Training Center, which is undoubtedly the world's finest training center for our law enforcement officers that serve you proudly as your state game wardens and you can look across our state and see these magnificent places that the Parks and Wildlife Foundation, along with their partners, private landowners, ranchers, National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, the Nature Conservancy, and on and on, have helped conserve for future generations places like the Powderhorn and the Devil's River, Palo Pinto Mountain State Park, the places that define us as a state. Let's give the foundation a big round of applause for all they do for our home ground. Their work is generational in time and place, and a big part of tonight is an opportunity for us to both honor and remember the great founders of this organization 25 years ago. Of course, the late Perry R. Bass, a conservationist, conservationist, Ed Cox, Chuck Nash, Nacho Garza, and Andy Sansom. These men had a wonderful vision, and we're here to celebrate them tonight and look forward to that later on in the program. Um, we've all been to a lot of events like this, and we know that they don't happen by accident. They come about as a wonderful um, manifestation of the largesse and spirit of generosity of many, many private individuals and foundations and corporations who give so generously of their time and talents and treasure to help support events like this. Uh, we have uh, a gaggle of sponsors, um, and let's just give them all a round of applause. You know who you are and what you do for our state. And so thank you for your support of tonight and making it special. Um, we've got a room full of VIPs, and I will uh, acknowledge a few of them. Uh, of course, I would be terribly remiss if I didn't start off with my bosses at the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission. We're blessed tonight to have uh, current commissioners, former commissioners, current members of the Parks and Wildlife Foundation Board, past members of the Parks and Wildlife Foundation Board. If I can ask, just ask all of you to stand up so we can honor and recognize you all for your service to the great state of Texas. Thank you all for what you do and how you do it. Yeah. I saw Governor Perry earlier this evening. Governor, where are you? Where are you, Governor? Right there. Nice to see you, Governor. Thanks for joining us tonight. Great friend of the Parks and Wildlife, our home ground. Thank you, Governor, for coming. I saw Senator Craig Estes from Wichita Falls, another great friend of this department, the Foundation. Senator, where are you? I won't tell everybody. There you are. Yeah, nice to see you, Senator. Thanks for coming tonight. 
uh, the former chair and com current commissioner at the Railroad Commission, Christy Craddock. Commissioner Craddock, are you with us tonight? I saw you standing up. Okay, I, I, I hear an applause somewhere. I just can't see you. And so thank you for coming. We also have with us the new executive director at the Railroad Commission, Kimberly Corley. And so uh, welcome to your service for the state of Texas. Kimberly, look forward to meeting you, and thank you for your work the Railroad Commission. Last but not least, uh, we have with us Major General James Red Brown with the Texas Army National Guard. And let's give him thanks and all the work that he, his men and women do for our fine state. General Brown, thank you for coming tonight. Before we break for dinner and after dinner, we'll resume with the program and have a chance to appropriately honor um, Chuck and Andy and Nacho and Ed and again, uh, the late Perry Bass. Uh, I want to ask our friend and fellow commissioner, uh, Bill Jones, to come up and give an invocation tonight. So, Commissioner. When Carter asked me to do the prayer tonight, he made a specific request that I not do the Black Baptist minister version. <laughs> he said we actually have a program tonight that we need to get to. So, I'll give you some other version. If you would bow with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come tonight, first of all, thanking you for the many blessings that you've given us. We come specifically thanking you for the wildlife, the rivers, the creeks, the grasses, the fish, the fowl of the air, all of what we call nature and what you call your creation. We thank you for all of these blessings that you've given us, but along with those blessings, we know that we have a responsibility that you call stewardship. And we ask that you would give us the strength to be good stewards of your blessings. And we come tonight thanking you for people who have demonstrated that stewardship. We come thanking you for those that we honor tonight, for their love of your creation, and for their commitment to conserve it, preserve it, promote it. And we ask a specific blessing on their families, not just for what they have endured, to do what they have done for which they will receive honors, but that they might continue this commitment into the future. And as we come thanking you for your blessings, committing to you our stewardship, we thank you for the food which we're about to receive, for the hands that grew it and delivered it and prepared it for our consumption tonight. And may this food be used for the glory of your holy name, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Carter Smith is really one of the state's greatest assets, and we all know that. Carter, thank you for leading us. That was purely ad lib, by the way. It's not in Lydia's notes. <clears throat> Good evening, I'm Kelly Thompson. I chair the Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation. We hope you've enjoyed your dinner. The, conservation, the Texas Conservation Hall of Fame was created to honor uh, those conservationists and leaders who have uh, done so well for our state. It's fitting that the, on this 25th anniversary that we honor the founders, the visionary uh, leaders who had the wisdom and foresight to create the Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation. It's certainly better if I read Lydia's notes. During the time that I've served as chairman, it's amazing uh, all that we've recognized uh, that they have accomplished in, over the years. There have been 73 trustees of the foundation. Many of them are here tonight. I'd like to recognize the prior foundation chairman, Ed Cox, 
who you'll see tonight. Tim Hickson, who would be here, but his wife is receiving a great honor in San Antonio. Pat Oles, who is here tonight, and Will Beatrell. Last year, I told you about a new organization of young professionals called the Stewards of the Wild. It is uh, an incredible group of young people who are celebrating conservation outdoors all the time with educational uh, programs and some fellowship events that we would all be jealous about participating in. I'd like to thank all of them who I believe are in the balcony for their attendance. In a few minutes, we're going to share a conversation with our founders, but now let's look at a video, a special video, looking back over the last 25 years of the foundation. Everybody has a role to play in conservation. It's all of our responsibility, not just public officials, not just private citizens, all of us. When a share of Lunkers entered into the program, we bring it over here to the Texas Freshwater Fishery Center. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Anheuser-Busch Dive Show and Theater. 1.5 million will be donated to the Texas Parks and Wildlife. How about a big round of applause? My vision for Texas Parks and Wildlife going forward is to build on our strengths. Texas Parks and Wildlife has the finest fish and wildlife professionals. We have the finest game wardens. We have the finest park professionals. We have a strong commitment to science and a strong commitment to maintaining opportunity for Texans to enjoy our natural resources. It's really all about people who have a passion for this state and want to contribute in meaningful ways and use their resources and their talents to help keep everything that's unique about this state for future generations. I have been involved with this great effort since its inception and look forward to being involved with this great effort for the rest of my life. This is one of the last great habitats along the Texas coast. We couldn't have done the Powderhorn Ranch project without the Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation. This is a very entrepreneurial, innovative, public-private partnership, really the precedent for the future. Certainly a public entity couldn't do this by itself. Thanks to the many donations from a wide variety of donors, big and small, we were able to see this dream realized. We have something that no other state has and I feel that we really need to do everything that we can now to build a platform for future generations. We fish! Aw, I got it away. Ugh. And the only way to accomplish that is through private-public partnership and getting more people engaged in the outdoors. Good evening. I'm Lydia Saldana with Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, and I'm very honored to be up here with our founders to join in a conversation with our founders about the Parks and Wildlife Foundation. And I just know that Perry R. Bass is with us in spirit. 
Let me kick off this with a few, introduction, with a few introductions, because I know there might be one or two people in the room that might not know who these guys are up on the stage, so let me introduce them. Right to my left is Ed Cox. Ed served on the commission from 1979, the Parks and Wildlife Commission, from 1979 to 1988. And he was the chairman of the Parks and Wildlife Commission from 88, or 83 to 88. And more importantly, from our point of view, he was the first chairman of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation Board of Trustees. And he served in that role from 1992 to 98. Right next to him is Chuck Nash. Chuck Nash served on the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission from 1987 to 1993, and he served as chairman from 88 to 91. And Ignacio, and we're gonna call you Nacho, all, all his friends call him Nacho, so he's Nacho tonight. Nacho served as commissioner from 91 to 97, and he served as chairman of the Parks and Wildlife Commission from 1991 to 95. And finally, at the end, Andrew Sansom. Andy was the executive director of Texas Parks and Wildlife Department from 1990 to 2001. And in starting a conversation, it's always good to start at the beginning, right? So let's start at the beginning. And that was when Andy was named executive director in 1990. And one of Andy's first initiatives was to broaden philanthropic support for the department. Andy, tell us about that. Well, I was originally brought to the Parks and Wildlife Department by Ed Cox and named chairman by Chuck Nash. Chuck uh, understood the power of philanthropy. I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. And I realized very quickly that the biggest issue we faced was M-O-N-E-Y. And so Chuck gave me complete support to begin the creation of the Parks and Wildlife Foundation. Chuck, what do you recall about that? Well, I, as Andy and I talked, we knew we had to get Mr. Bass on board. And thank goodness, not only did he get on board, he was one of our biggest supporters till this day. He may not be here physically, but he's still helping us. Yes. And uh, he was, that's where it started. I mean, once Mr. Bass opened up the doors, we were able to start helping. Yeah, and pretty soon after that, Governor Ann Richards got elected in November of 1990. She took office in January of 1991. And a couple of changes happened then. Andy, what do you recall about that? Well, it started out basically in the offices of the department, and Ann Helbing is here tonight. She was the first person on our yep. staff who began to work with the foundation. But we realized that to take it to another level, we needed to have more than Ann Helbing and I involved. <laughs> and so we got the governor's support, and we went out to Walter Humphrey's ranch. Walter was a member of the commission at the time to try to take it to the next level. And Nacho, what do you re recall about Governor Richard's kind of support for the idea? Uh, what I remember is uh, she hosted a dinner at the mansion. Mm -hmm. And you had some real people that I was very impressed that we had the opportunity to meet. Uh, obviously, Mr. Bass was there, uh, Lady Bird Johnson, which was a real pleasure to meet her because uh, family ties from my father back to President Johnson. It was the first time I met Ed. Mm -hmm. And we had that to talk about the foundation and going forward. And what I remember most especially was as I walked out of the mansion that night, and the governor was there to say goodbye, and she says, uh, hey, by the way, I think Ed Cox would make a wonderful first chairman <laughs> of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation. Ed, what, well, do, you and, and what she, do you remember about that, Ed? <clears throat> she mentioned that to me, and uh, of course, I was, I was really nonplussed and, and uh, thought that'd be fun, but I didn't know Nacho. <laughs> so we had to work on that. Well, none of us really knew Nacho, but I remember after Governor Richards appointed him chairman, his first big event was a speech down at the, in Kingsville <laughs> and to a group of uh, South Texas landowners. And if anybody's ever heard Nacho, he's one of the best speakers in Texas. <laughs> and so when he got down off the rostrum, I said, Mr. Chairman, you did an absolutely wonderful job. And he said, Andy, they're just glad I speak English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and soon after Governor Richards named Nacho as chairman, you think we're continuing to move along the foundation front. And Walter Humphrey was also involved, and wasn't there an interesting gathering at Walter Humphrey's ranch? Tell us about that. Well, uh, shortly after the party at the mansion, there was this uh, gathering at Walter's. And as Ed said, I didn't know Ed, Ed didn't know me. Yeah, I knew it was a setup. But, <laughs> but we sat out and uh, 
I, I told Lydia, Ed and I sat outside and talked. And I was pretty sure I had him after the first six pack. Of Anheuser-Busch product on my dad. more than that. <laughs> so Nacho comes to me and he says, Andy, I think my best contributions to this deal are going to be between midnight and 4 a.m. <laughs> no, he, he, uh, he did. He, he had me, and uh, I mean, my concern was the full support of uh, Mr. Bass and, uh, and having Mr. Bass as proxy because we had to cut through a lot of, if you recall, <laughs> yes. a lot of government stuff yep. and uh, having Nacho support and, of course, Andy's, who was my dear friend at the time and, and ever since. So. Fun. It was a fun time. We all, one of the things that we all have in common was that Mr. Bass was our mentor and uh, supported us through thick and thin, gave us feedback when we needed it, supported us. I remember my first, first meeting as executive director, I was standing at the rostrum and Mr. Bass always sat on the front row as the chairman emeritus. And apparently I had holes in my shoes. <laughs> and so he decided that. quickly that it was unacceptable for the executive director to have holes in his shoes. So he arranged to have me a new pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually the, 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 the next big thing that happened in foundation history happened on San Jose Island. And Perry R. Bass was a huge part of that, along with a very special guest. Who wants to talk about that? Well, let me take that because it was it was pretty amazing we had uh, I think I saw Buddy Jones earlier but he represented the Bass interest as well as the Anheuser Busch interest and so we knew August Bush was a big sportsman and I fly a very small airplane but when the Bush two sons and Mr. Bush flew down in their Falcon 900 flying at themselves. I kind of said, there's some pretty special magic that's going to go on. And so that first night, we're sitting around the table, and, and Mr. Bush stood up and he said, you know, let's just take the pressure off this weekend. We give somewhere between 800000 and a $1 million a year to the state of Texas for conservation. We'd like the foundation to handle that. And I can tell you that Ed and I, I think it was a frozen moment. Yeah. And I think Mr. Bass wasn't too impressed. Like, well, that's a nice beginning. <laughs> 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 but, but that started us. That absolutely was the quantum leap that, that took us off. And Lee may remember this, but we, we had a little uh, custodial work to do to get ready for Mr. Bush because the refrigerators at the island were stocked with Miller Lite. <laughs> so uh -oh. we, <laughs> we were scurrying around removing the Miller Lite for a while before he got there. But after Mr. Bush made his tr <clears throat> tremendous gift to us, we had other sponsors come in like yeah. Chevron, yeah. Uh, Dow Chemical, yeah. the Meadows Foundation. So quickly uh, institutions across Texas realized the importance of, of, of our work and how critical it was, particularly to support the future generations of Texas. Right, and so many things that were happening at the time depended on sponsor support. And this is a good time to bring up Texas Wildlife Expo. And that was kind of Chuck's baby, wasn't it, Andy? Hey, but Lydia, before we leave that subject of the island, just one quick candidate, which was okay. great. As, as Ed will recall, we were all summoned to the, to the airport because <laughs> the bushes were leaving. <laughs> and so we, August Bush said, would y'all like to get a tour of our Falcon 900? Okay, so we all went up the stairs, we all went through the deal, and Mr. Bass was absolutely playing, oh, this is just wonderful, this is just <laughs> wonderful. And so, I mean, the engines are roaring, we all go downstairs and we're thinking, what, where are we going with this story? And August is at the top and he's beginning to pull the stairs up and he said, Perry, you really ought to get one of these. He says, I have one and my son Lee and Sid both enjoy theirs too. <laughs> <laughs> And August and, said, and yes, sir, I went. understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might have helped the contribution a little more. There but, you, you go. Know. There you go. Uh, that, that, that Texas thing, it works every time, doesn't yep. it? Yep. So Texas Wildlife Expo. Well, it was, it, was, it, was, it was the last year I was on the commission, and, and Mike Leggett and Ray Sasser had been great friends, and we sat around talking one day, and we just said, what are we missing here? And, and we really felt like that Texas in general didn't understand what we did especially the youth of Texas. And so we said, you know, let's start this expo. Let's see what we can do. And uh, it, was, it was great. I think our first, uh, we had PETA show up and my friend Bubba Wood, who's sitting in the <laughs> audience, and there was this great sign that said, Bubba doesn't like hunting. 
and Bubba Wood went over and got a picture with it. And uh, <laughs> it, was, it was a great weekend, and it was, I think we had 8,500 people on that Saturday, Sunday, and it grew to over 200,000 people at, toward its end. And what we learned, too, was about the, what the foundation could actually do as a vehicle for right. this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and it really uh, set us off on another path, an additional path. Absolutely. <clears throat> you know, and one of the signature events that many in this room will recall is the Expo Banquet that happened the Friday before the event. And, and that event is actually morphed into this event that, that we're enjoying tonight. And uh, we had many kind of star-studded uh, speakers, including that, that first expo, Ann Richards came. And what did she talk about? Do so she called me <laughs> and she said, what in the world am I gonna say to these people? Well, we had been on a wonderful turkey hunt out at Walter's Ranch. And I said, well, why don't you tell your turkey story? And no one can tell, uh, no one but Ann Richards can tell a turkey hunting story quite like this. Let's roll the tape. You, you get a tom by making noises like a hen. And we women know how that works. And then you go And then you hear more intense. Go, 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 go. And with every call, the response gets more intense more passionate and more urgent. Now, I don't speak turkey, but even I could understand this conversation. <laughs> Those toms get just to the point where they can't stand it another second, where they are certain that there has never been another male as splendid as they are, and then they lose their heads and meet their mouth. <laughs> They never knew what hit them. <laughs> and there have been criticisms of people like us who enjoy going hunting. And I have tried to explain to them that never could any bird possibly meet their death in happier circumstances <laughs> than being perfect. You. This, this whole event has been a walk down memory lane, so it's fun to share this with you. And of course, Anheuser-Busch was one of the first major sponsors that, that made it possible for us to do Wildlife Expo. Gulf States Toyota was another sponsor that, that, that was also instrumental for us to do that program for 17 years. Um, AB was also, I'm going to use the acronym because that's what we do in this business, right? We use acronyms. AB was also critical to the first brick and mortar project of the foundation, the Texas Freshwater Fishery Center. And Ed, I gotta let you talk about that. Well, we had a, a concept that uh, we, we needed a new hatchery. <clears throat> we needed a research facility. And we, we thought that uh, maybe we could do it with private money and no, no state money. So we were able to have a bidding war, actually, with uh, numerous cities, I think we ended up with 17 cities bidding, mm -hmm. and uh, they bid basically what the city could provide and what they could raise from private individuals to match with federal funds. So uh, we, we did this, and, and Athens won by a, a, a fair significant, fairly significant amount, probably it was $4.3 million was the private bid from Athens. Mm -hmm. And I think the next one was $3.7 million. But I, I did, and, and uh, I know Chuck will appreciate this. Uh, I received a call in the morning. Kathy comes and gets me out of the shower, 7 o'clock in the morning, says, Bob Bullock's on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Andy and remembers uh, calls like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you know, uh, it, this can't be that big a deal. Well, it was on the TV news over in Tyler about this bidding process. And Tyler was bidding. And there, were, there was, of course, Canada, a lot of seats. And he, he was promoting Longview. So uh, I said, you know, we've got KPMG scoring this, and we've got a law firm scoring it, and it's all arm's length, and, and uh, you know, we're not fooling around here. So Athens won it fair and square, and, and we're all very proud of what's happened there. And of course, it, it was a, a whole opportunity to bring you know, fisheries management and fisheries education up to a whole different level and, and introducing it to people. And I understand that you all had an experience well, that, that showed about a, 
what that reach has been. <clears throat> Along with uh, Sea Center Texas, which we partnered with CCA to build, the Athens Freshwater Fisheries Center were two of the most unprecedented facilities in the United States, which combined production hatchery, research, and, and uh, education. And, and Ed and I and Nacho have continued over the years to hunt and fish together almost every year. And we were down in the Laguna Madre several years ago on a fishing boat, fishing for redfish. And sometime during the day, the guide turned to us, not knowing who this man was, and said, you guys ever been up to that freshwater fisheries place at Athens? That's probably the coolest place I've ever taken my kids. Not understanding that the man who was responsible for doing it was in the boat. And I, I will never forget that. And it, and it gave us a, a wonderful insight into how broad the reach of, of these programs are across our state. Now we were able to build an $18.8 .8 million facility. Right. With, with that uh, private contribution. Right, and as Carter mentioned, mm. since 1996, more than one million folks have been through the Texas Freshwater Fisheries Center learning about fishing, learning about the role of conservation. It's a pretty cool deal. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And I remember that day. I remember that day when we opened the place. And if Phil DeRocher was here, I think there's some fishery f folks here. We'll remember that the paint was hardly dry, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we warned were, the governor, we don't lean against the wall because the paint was still wet. But it was a, it was a, it was a pretty cool deal, and it, it reminded me. And as I look through the photos that you've seen, it's just the the support that we've had. And of course, Governor Perry's here. Governor Richards has supported us. We we've just had an a, a amazing amount of support. Governor Clements, Chuck Nash, if you can talk about that. You know, uh, we've just had an amazing amount of support for the work of the foundation. One short anecdote. Yeah. Uh, Governor Perry and I went in there one day in full camo after a deer hunt, and they had no idea who he was for about the first 10 minutes. We got <laughs> most of the way through that, if you'll recall. <laughs> it was, uh, it, and then and we worked on bringing kids from, from right. you know, as, as far as three hours away yeah. to get them to run through there. It was, it was really cool. It was Pretty fun cool. Deal. Now, Governor Abbott couldn't be with us tonight, but he, he does send his well wishes for the foundation's 25th anniversary. Let's wrap this conversation up with just a few closing remarks. As you look back on 25 years since the founding and ahead to the next 25 years, what are your thoughts? Ed? Well, I, uh, 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 we knew this was gonna happen. So, uh, you know, we, 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 we had no clue, we, we hoped. But uh, this has been a, a great dream, and it's, it's really been carried out by a bunch of great conservationists, Parks and Wildlife Commissioners, uh, Foundation Board Members, Department Staff, and uh, I'm just proud to be involved. It's been great. Chuck. Well, I think first off, let me thank Annie Brown and her staff and Kelly Thompson and the Board of Trustees. This has been a wonderful night. Mm -hmm. But I guess my challenge to the, to the Board of Trustees is I've got a daughter named Catherine that's sitting over there that's about to have my eighth grandchild. Yippee! It's, <laughs> it's not about us anymore. Yeah. It's about those Texans that aren't here yet. Those Texans are going to be here next month. And, you know, Fleetwood Mac's not one of my greatest bands, but don't stop thinking about tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, or not Chuck. Uh, you know, it's hard to believe it's been 25 years. I mean, 25 years ago, our daughters were six and four, <laughs> and they grew up at Expo and hunting and fishing across Texas. It's bittersweet being up here because we see the pictures of those who helped us but aren't here with us anymore, uh, Mr. Bass and Governor Clements and Governor Richards. And it's especially, you know, to think something lasted 25 years speaks not only to the power of the idea of the foundation, but to the support every succeeding chairman, commissioner has given this, from Lee Bass to Mr. Friedkin. Mm -hmm. Because the idea is so good, it's hard not to buy into it. Now, earlier I heard Carter Smith up here. And Carter said something that I first heard when Andy, I think, told me this, and it's something he said he had heard, I believe, from Mr. Bass. 
And that was when Carter said that what we do, we do for people who aren't even born yet. And when I was 25 years ago, I wondered if my daughters would have the same opportunities to hunt and fish and enjoy the great outdoors of the state of Texas. And as I sit here waiting for my first grandchild in about a month, <laughs> I am sure today that I was 25 years ago because of the work of the foundation and the work it has done and will continue to do, the baby Charlotte will have every opportunity yeah. to enjoy the great outdoors of the Texas we all care for and love. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, Andy. <laughs> Andy. Mr. Bass always told us that one of the most important things that you could do is to make sure that your successors were better than you are. And we could never have dreamed that this organization could have flourished and had the impact that it has today with leadership like Ann Brown, Kelly, Tim Hickson, Carter. It's just been an amazing thing for us to watch. You know, Lee Bass and I were having a wonderful conversation in Fort Worth a few years ago, and both sets of our parents had passed away. And we were musing on the, on the, the fact that we hoped that they were able to see what had happened after their lifetimes. And Lee said to me, well, I'm sure there's some kind of a continuum. And I'm certain that if Mr. Bass were looking down on us today, yes. he would be incredibly proud of what this organization has done. And I know that I speak for each of, the, of us up here tonight. When I say that when you honor us, you honor the game wardens, the biologists, the park rangers, the staff of this foundation, and the people of Texas Parks and Wildlife. And so on their behalf, we are deeply grateful for this honor. Thank you. And now I would like to ask Carter and Kelly and Lee Bass to join us up here on stage for the presentation of the special Perry R. Bass medals to tonight's honorees. And Carter, I'm gonna ask you to take the mic from here on out. I'm gonna grab the mic. <laughs> Go for it, Kelly. Um, <laughs> None of this would be happening today but for a person named Ann Brown, who is the executive director of the foundation. She makes all of this happen every day. She's got an incredible staff, but thanks to you, Ann, for making this work. Well, as you've heard tonight, on so many occasions, there is someone that just permeates this room, somebody that's here. And, strongly in spirit and memory, uh, somebody who literally and figuratively looms larger than life in Texas conservation circles, and that is, of course, the late Perry R. Bass. And as all of our honorees have said fittingly tonight, uh, Mr. Bass is smiling proudly on all of us and all of you. And it's fitting tonight that we have a chance to honor these four men, the visionaries, the founders of this extraordinary foundation that does such wonderful and selfless things for our home ground with the Perry R. Bass Medal of Conservation. Our first honoree tonight, Ed Cox, former chairman, Parks and Wildlife Commission, first board president of the Parks and Wildlife Foundation, and the engine and brain and ingenuity behind the Texas Freshwater Fishery Center. Ladies and gentlemen, Ed Cox. Yes. Ed is lucky. All right, thank you. It's fine. It's not my guitar. <laughs> our next honoree, of course, also needs no introduction. Uh, our friend Chuck Nash, former chairman of the Parks and Wildlife Commission, and as you heard, the brains and brawn behind 
Texas Wildlife Expo that for 17 years was the greatest outdoor show on earth and introduced literally hundreds of thousands of uh, families and kids to the great outdoors. We're awfully proud to honor Chuck for his legacy of conservation in our fine state. Chuck Nash, Perry R. Bass Medal, Chuck. Our next uh, honoree, who also knows a little bit about looming tall over all of us, our friend from the Rio Grande Valley, Nacho Garza. Uh, Nacho not only stands tall when he's giving a speech to a group of ranchers, uh, but he stands tall when he's standing out a group of angry commercial shrimpers uh, and pushing through the state's limited entry program to help protect our bays and estuaries. He was an extraordinary chairman of the Parks and Wildlife Commission, did so much for our coast and our home ground. Ladies and gentlemen, Nacho Garza. Nacho. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all over but the band. Listen, on behalf of all of us at your Texas Parks and Wildlife, your Parks and Wildlife Foundation, thanks for caring for your wild things and wild places. They need you now more than ever. God bless all of you. Thanks for coming tonight.